so now that you've migrated to the cloud, common question we get is what's next? And it typically starts and ends with these three steps. And it's kind of a rinse and repeat of these three. But basically, we will start with visibility. So we'll, we will digest your cloud spend, whether that's AWS, Azure, and Google. And then we'll get our team engaged. So we have a cost optimization service that's a team of cloud experts. What's great about them is they're tracking cloud cost trends globally across the global 2000s. So they'll see things and be able to get your team up to speed on best practices um, before you'll be able to. Um, they've been doing this for the past 10 plus years. So they're an incredibly useful resource. Typically, our customers use them um, around six hours a month. And they're doing anything from cost optimization recommendations to reporting and analysis. That those recommendations and the analysis feeds into taking action. Um, so we have reactive and proactive templates that can take action on your cloud spend or really across any use case. And the thing to think about when you get to this phase is how do I start passing out reports that allow people to get informed and then how do we move to automation? So most of uh, most of the folks that we're working today, they start with visibility, then they go to recommending contextualized optimizations, and then they start automating these actions. And we'll show you this in the platform. So on day one, we'll digest your cloud spend. And for that workload that you migrated there, it'll make it'll be made up of a number of different services. So right now, we're on the executive level dashboard that shows all of your spend and we're sliced by service. You can change this to slice by resource type, for example, so we can see exactly what's made up of that workload that you migrated. But we'll digest anything on your cloud bill. So as your workloads expand in the cloud, this dashboard gives you the ability to report on your spend daily, weekly or monthly and historically as well. And the great thing about these dashboards is they're completely customizable. So as you need to dig into the cost of data transfer, for example, or your reserved instance purchases, we'll give you um, the granularity all the way down to the resource level uh, that's associated with that application. On day two, what people do with us is they need to actually allocate that spend. So for the workload that you migrated or for specific groups, they create showback centers. We call them billing centers within the product, and it's basically an allocation of cloud accounts or tags. But the point is to contextualize who's spending what and where, and then to actually contextualize recommendations to each of these billing centers. So you can see that within Dunder Mifflin, the engine is finding around $400 to save. In Soylent Corp, it's a little bit higher, around $1,200 within the given month. As far as optimizations go, we have a recommendations engine that'll provide um, optimization opportunities. We take in recommendations from the third party providers, and then we also contextualize them with that cost optimization team that we talked about. And I'll give you a simple example. So once, once we find an opportunity to save money, the policy catalog allows us to act on these recommendations. And this is key because visibility, if it just stops there, it doesn't actually solve the problem of optimizing your environment. So if we take a simple example, like unattached volumes, we can come into the catalog. We have a pre-built asset. And again, this is governance as code. So you can, you can edit the code and optimize these as needed. Um, but essentially, you can come in and set a schedule. Typically, our customers run it daily, weekly, or monthly, especially for unattached volumes. You can select all of your cloud estate, or you can segment this out as needed, and then identify volumes that have been attached for a given number of days. Depends on how aggressive you want to get here. With dev test, you know, it might be 15 days, and with production, it might be 60. Uh, we'll set this for 15 days. And if there were unattached volumes that I wanted to exclude, I could do that if I wanted. So to to set this in context, this engine can digest any REST API. It can then report and take action on that. We provide use cases out of the box. A simple example is unattached volumes. 
where you come in, you see what you have unattached, and then you get rid of them to save money. So that's a reactive example. Of course, we have other examples that span a number of different use cases, whether it's security compliance or operational management. A good example might be um, looking for long stopped instances that you can optimize or disallowed regions that people aren't supposed to be running in or even utilizing recommendations from the cloud providers like taking advantage of AWS savings plans or reserved instances. We have around 100 to 200 out of the box policies that you can edit and get going with on day one. Uh, that's typically where people start their optimization journey. Nirvana tends to be uh, more on the proactive side though. So actually having developers and people that need to get access to the cloud, spin up cost optimized, secure and compliant resources by default. So the idea would be, would be to provide a catalog where they can get access to their daily work um, and this could integrate with anything that they're used to and familiar with, like CloudFormation, ARM templates, Terraform, Ansible, Salt, Chef, et cetera, but just in a governed way. And so we have a very simple example um, where you can actually place a development workload, for example, in the cheapest public or private cloud option. So a developer can come in, they can write their cloud app name, and they can spin up that environment um, with the proper performance profiles, deployment options, cost centers for show back and charge back and schedules for cost optimization. It'll actually go out and look for the cheapest public or private environment. Another good example um, would be, you know, the cloud app that waits for approval. Um, so this could be an environment um, that you migrated and that your developers will need to get access over and over again, but you actually want to make sure um, that they need it. Um, so this catalog item will send a incident to ServiceNow and the manager will have to approve it before the developer will get access. So this really would apply to any use case that you migrate whether it's in a public or a private cloud, a container, a VM, a PaaS workload, it doesn't matter. The use case here is to be proactive uh, about what gets into the cloud before it gets there. And then when you need to be reactive about cleaning it up, that's when folks use the policy engine for guardrails. So that's a quick tour of what happens once you've migrated to the cloud. You start with visibility, then we provide recommendations that both driven from the platform and also from our team to add contextualization and then we can help you take action on it so whether that's with automated guardrails and policies or templates that are a bit more proactive we certainly would be happy to help you out